Okay, so now we're going to try to start taking a look at calculating uh, some probabilities of random variables that follow a normal distribution. I've got the normal distribution copied over from um, our previous section in the notes. Um, 1 over sigma, square root of 2 pi, e to the negative 1 over 2 sigma squared, x minus mu squared. So what we're going to do to get started out here is we're just going to go ahead and take a look at the standard normal distribution what the standard normal distribution is is the distribution here where you have a mean value of zero and a standard deviation and a variance of one and when we take a look at that this simplifies our function a little bit right um what's your standard normal distribution pdf going to look like when sigma is equal to one this simplifies a little bit at the start because sigma is 1, so that's 1 over just square root of 2 pi. And then we have e to the negative 1 over 1 half sigma squared. Well, again, if sigma is 1, sigma squared is just 1, so I've got negative 1 half. And if mu is equal to 0, then, then x minus 0 squared, that's just x squared. So we'll start with this. 1 over root 2 pi, e to the minus 1 half x squared. e to the minus 1 half x squared. All right. Now, remember that in the continuous case of normal distributions, so if we have a standard normal distribution, it's going to look something like this. So here would be x and f of x. And if we want some sort of probability, for example, if we wanted some sort of probability, you know, from, let's say, a to b, right, then we're going to integrate from a to b f of x dx there. We're going to integrate from a to b f of x dx, so... We want this area, maybe, for example. We're going to integrate that, right? So we'd have to integrate uh, 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus 1 half x squared. The good news about this is this is so common that we have a table that has computed a lot of these values for us already. Um, hence, standard normal. It's pretty standard. It's pretty normal. So we're going to use, we have a table ready to go. All right. Um, that would be... In our textbook, table A3, I believe, uh, indicates the area under the standard normal curve. Indicates the area under the standard normal curve. That is the normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1 mean zero and standard deviation one and we tend to use the letter z so this gives you the area under the standard um what type of area does it give us it gives us of the form it's a cumulative table less than so the probability that um we tend to use the letter z for the standard normal distribution z is less than some little value of z um it gives us this probability up to up to uh, 3.49 up to 3.49 and so let me just see if I can't tab over to the table here real quick um, areas under the normal curve so you can see we've got the graphic here it's a cumulative table areas under the normal curve let me get rid of this and so what do we have it goes from, let's go one more page over here. So we can see our Z value here. Column or a row down that first column, it goes to 3.4. And then the top row, it gives you the hundredths place on the decimal. So if I want to go all the way to 3.49, that bottom right value, oops. Got to work on my scrolling skills here. That would go 3.49, that goes right there, is about 0.9998. So the vast majority of the cur um, area under the curve is at 3.49 and lower. But let's just take a look at an example of how we can use this here. So let's go ahead and try to do the following. What is the probability that Z is less than 0.74? What is the probability that Z is less than 0.74? Seven four. Um, now, graphically, graphically, 
if this is X, I guess we can say this is Z now, and then this is this is F on top. Z less than 0 0.74 in the standard normal curve would be saying like right here we're looking at about 0.74, and so we'd be computing on the normal distribution, we'd be getting all of the area to the left of 0.74. All of that area to the left of 0.74. So let's go ahead and take a look at the table. We got to find 0 0.74, 0 0.74. So 0 0.7 is right here. There's my 0 0.7. And then 0 0.7, oh, 0 0.74, so you're going to tack on the 04 to it. So 04 here, you find this entry right there, 0 0.7704, 0 0.77. 0, 0.7704. 0 okay, and again, just to kind of write out in English the steps that we do on the table. You first find 0.7 in the left column here, right? First, we find 0 0.7 in the leftmost column. Then you move across that row, move across that row to get to under 0 0.004. To get under 0 0.04. And that's where we find the 0.7704. Okay, let's find the Z value. Find the Z value leaving an area of 0 0.5636 to the left. Find the z-value leaving an area of 0.5636 to the left. So essentially what this is asking, what this is asking is for what value in the table do I get a probability of 0.5636, 5636. So let's go ahead and look at our table and look for 5636. This is like a reverse lookup in the table. So now I want to go in the table and find 0.5636. 36. So where's 0 0.5636 here? Um, starting at the top, notice at 0, 0.0, right at 0, right? This is 50%. 50%. That's exactly halfway because our standard normal distribution is centered at 0. That's the mean. You have half the distribution to the left, half the distribution to the right. 0.5636 is larger than this, so we are somewhere in the positive realm. And that looks like it is right here. There's 0.5636. So what is that value? That is 0 0.16. 0 0.16. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So we should find, we see the probability that Z is less than 0 0.16 is equal to 0 0.5636, so the desired response then is, what Z value is it? It's 0 0.16, 0 0.16, 0 0.16, okay. Uh, Follow-up question though, um, this is nice because it's area to the left, right? The table has given us all the probability values to the left, so what if, we wanted the area to the right to be 0 0.5636. What if we want the probability that Z is greater than, what is the, what's the value of Z greater than that gives us a 0 0.5636? Then what is the Z value here? Then what is the Z value? Well, this is where symmetry can go a long ways on working with the normal distribution. Symmetry is going to be a very crucial tool here. I always encourage us to sketch a picture to help visualize. 
something like that for our standard normal distribution, okay? So what we know right now is that if I go to 0 0.16, if I go here, I know that all of the area to the left of this, all of the area to the left is going to give me an area of 0 0.5636, right? All the area to the left. But we want a z value that gives us an area to the right of 0.5636. Okay, well, this normal distribution is symmetric about the line x equals 0, right? It's symmetric about the vertical axis. So if the area to the left of 0.16 is the 56%, then if I go to the negative 0.16, but I'm not going to go to the left, I look to the right, symmetrically, that's the same area, is it not? Right, symmetrically, to the right of the negative, that's like flipping it around, that's the exact same area because remember, this distribution is symmetric. So we could just say then by symmetry, we know that the probability that z is greater than, greater than negative 0.16 is equal to 0.5636. So the answer that we're looking for here then is just the negative. That would be the negative 0.16, right? So what's the z value we want then? That would be negative 0.16. That would leave us the area to the right. Symmetry is very useful here to help us tackle things. It's also very useful because sometimes you're given questions that are asking you about greater than problems, greater than areas, right? And we have to remember that our table, remember that our table is only going to give us areas to the left, right? I like that there's an image at the top right reminding us that it gives us areas to the left, right? One page is giving us negative z values. The next page gives us the positive z values. But remember, the table only gives us areas to the left. So we can always use symmetry to come up with a, an analog problem that we can use the table. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Given a standard normal distribution given a standard normal distribution find let's set up two questions right away part a the area to the right of z equals 1.84 and B, let's find the area between Z equals negative 1.97 and Z equals 0 0.86. All right, so for A, writing this out in, in um, using our, our probability notation, an area to the right, area to the right means we're looking at a greater than problem of 1.84 area to the right of 1.84 okay area to the right of 1.84 well we can use um this isn't necessarily using symmetry this is really just looking at the complementary event right in the sense that the probability that z is greater than 1.84 should be equal to 1 minus the probability that we are less than that value 1 minus the probability that z is less than 1.84 Eight, four. Right? Fair game. Um, it doesn't hurt to draw a picture, though. It does not hurt to draw a picture still yet. Right? I want the area to the right of 1.84. So let's say 1.84 is here. And we want this area. We want that area, okay? Well, the whole area is going to be equal to 1, right? The whole area is equal to 1. So if I take 1 minus this area, right, in yellow, we're looking at the probability that z is less than 1.84. If I do 1 minus the area in yellow here, I'm going to be left with the area in blue, which is exactly what we want. And this we can look up in the table. 1.84 in our probability table. We're going to go ahead and find 1.8 on the first column, that would be down here. 
And then we need the O4. So this is 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, and 1.84. Just verifying with that column header. 0 0.9671. 0 0.9671. And so we do the arithmetic there. That is 0 0.0329, 0 0.0329. How about part B? Between negative 1.97 and 0 0.86. Let's think about this. Between negative 1.97 and 0 0.86. Again, I think a picture is going to go a long ways here. So we want to be between, we want to be between negative 1.97, so let's put negative 1.97, obviously to the left of the vertical axis, 0 0.86, maybe something like this, 0 0.86, okay? So we want the area between these values right here. This is the area we want to get. So I want to be greater than negative 1.97, but less than 0 0.86. So how do we get the area between that? How can we get the area between that? Well, what we can do in the table is in the table, we can find the area that is to the left of 0.86 completely, right? In the table, I can get all of this area. I can look that up. So let me start with that. So if you can kind of see the green here, I apologize for those uh, folks um, who will struggle with the colors. But if I write this out, I'm going to take the probability that Z is less than 0 0.86. Okay, But that's too much, right? I only want that area up to this point here. So what I need to do from there is I need to subtract the extra area. So I want to take away this area right there in red. So we're going to go minus the probability that Z is less than less than negative 1.97. All right. So I'm going to take all of the area. We're going to take all of the area. And then we're going to go ahead and get rid of the area we don't want. So let's go ahead and take a look up at the table. Z less than 0 0.86. 0 0.86. Is 0 0.8051. 8051. And then we need the area that Z is less than negative 1.97. The area that Z is less than negative 1.97. Probably that Z is less than negative 1.97. Go to the table here. Uh, negative is on the previous page. So negative 1.9, and then where is 7 here? I believe that is this column right here. It's 0 0.0244. That looks good. And so then we just need to run the arithmetic there. 0 0.8051 minus 0 0.0244 is 0 0.7807. 0 0.7807. Okay. All right. Good. Excellent. Um, finding areas and under the normal curve. Being able to work with the standard normal table and answering all sorts of questions like this and variations of this. Things like between, things greater than, things less than. Um, is a crucial skill that we're going to need to continue to work on develop. We want to become experts at answering questions like this so they become automatic later on. So we're going to continue to practice working with the standard normal table um, in upcoming videos. For now, let's take a short break and we will revisit this again soon.